This is the Wynn Stanley in Battersea, one of London's largest and most deprived council estates, home to more than 3,000 mainly English people and birthplace of the gangster rapper group So Solid. Proximity to Britain's busiest railway station, Clapham Junction, has helped the Wynn Stanley become a hub for drug dealers in southern England. But the estate is also the home of a church hoping to change that reputation. St Peter's, like many British churches, had a dwindling congregation of mainly women pensioners until this year, when a group of 20-somethings from a middle-class church in the upmarket bit of Battersea came to join them. Some of them moved from comfortable flats in Clapham onto the estate. My name's Patrick Malone and I'm the minister for a small community church just on the edge of the estate here. I think when a lot of people think about church, they can think about a sort of private club or a kind of closed or even a gated little community that just looks after itself and speaks a language that no one else really understands. And um, that's, not the, that's not kind of what you see when you read the New Testament or you can read what Jesus talks about uh, in the Gospels. So what we're doing for example, this week we're just launching what we're calling community groups, uh, and uh, rather than just being a, you know, meeting once a week and having, you know, our, our Bible study and singing songs in our little holy huddle, which all may be good stuff, um, we can uh, each group has an outward focus to connect with the community. We're not trying to hide the fact we're Christians. You know, we're not we're not ashamed of the gospel. Um, I think people will see how long we stay around and the things we do, and that will make the difference. Levain, my wife, works. She's a teacher in a city school up the road. So we kind of sometimes when we're out and about, we sort of hear the kids going, "All right, Mrs. Malone," and they kind of know they know her. In, in some sense, we feel ill-equipped. We don't feel we didn't grow up on council estates. Uh, we don't pretend. I mean, she's much better off. She's worked with, with kids um, with learning difficulties and, as I say, in pupil referral units. So she's, she's always worried the way I speak to people, I'm going to get, you know, shot or knifed or something. She says she's worried whenever I go out that I'm going to offend someone. But I just think you've got to be who you are. One of the things that really excites me, actually, is that I kind of want to see the gospel working. I'm kind of a bit bored and a bit sick of, of the gospel being hidden inside a church, where you have to have a certain kind of membership card, or you have to reach a certain level of credentials to get in through the door. Well, that isn't the picture I see in the gospels. Actually, if you, when you read the gospels, it's all going on outdoors in the marketplace, like where people are working, or people are connecting. And I, I kind of want to see if the gospel works. I believe it does, but I, I want to see it working myself and see people's lives ch changed by it, not least my own. You just need to put yourself in a place where there's a need. Are you available? Will you make yourself available? Will you make your life available to others? I'm not a tool, and any of my friends will tell you, I'm not like um, the holier than now Christian. In fact, far, far from it, but I do want to make my life available. Times Online will follow the church as they attempt to do what no government has so far managed to bring positive and lasting change to the lives of people on the Wind Stanley.